Step into analysis, please. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 8, Kiksuya. This episode was amazing and emotionally charged and enticing for so many reasons. It showed us the journey of the mysterious ghost nation revolving fully around Akichita. The scenery, the meaning behind everything, just the overall beauty and hidden love story leaves us with so much to consider for this review. Before we get started, the winner of last week's giveaway was David Lane. Thank you all that entered, and if you like doing fun stuff like this, you know, let me know in the comments below. But without further ado, Let's overthink an HBO show about robots. This episode, easily one of the most linear to date, and instead of splitting it apart based on storyline, I'd rather just go from start to finish about the overall episode. It opens to a bullet-riddled William being discovered by Akichita and brought back to the Ghost Nation camp. William states while on the ground that he isn't going to die here, not yet. This reinforces the idea that him stating in season one that he wasn't leaving the park ever again meant that he was playing the game until he was dead, and now with his goal of destroying his biggest mistake, we may see the end of his character in a very large self-sacrifice that serves to help the hosts in the grand scale of things. Back at the camp, Akichita tells William that he remembers the evils that he's done, and that he doesn't deserve death, which would be the passage away from his current suffering. Acknowledging the line spoken to Lawrence in season one about running down Ghost Nation Braves in their winter grounds. The point is that these two have had interactions off camera and their paths have crossed before, thus explaining why they feel so negatively towards William and why they later tell his daughter that he has a sickness. The rest of the story is delivered to us by the telling to Maeve's daughter, and in the way the episode ends, I fully believe that Maeve was the target of this story the entire time. If you consider the little girl has never been told that she understands additional languages programmed into her code, but Akichita starts the conversation off ensuring the little girl it was all right in English, and then switching to a language not her native tongue. Are you afraid of me? He can't hurt you. The cookie, you are Yuksuya, we are Kiki and Chick. I truly believe from the beginning of the story it was meant for Maeve as the ultimate way to tie together the previous storylines and get them on the same page that, hey, you know, I did those things for a reason. I need you to understand that if we're going to survive this place. In addition, I've been watching over you guys the entire time. Akichita's tale begins with his first storyline, the love of his life and the peaceful tribe who hunted and gathered food for their people. He travels into town after hearing the gunshots and finds Arnold dead. He finds the maze and it gets stuck into his mind. It's inscribed into everything that he can think to inscribe it into, and it's unclear exactly why. My original thought was that it's a visual version of these violent delights have violent ends. Like a uh, kind of trigger of this journey to their awakening designed by Arnold. But we know that that's not exactly true because the symbol was placed all over the place, and we'd see many more hosts freaking out about this symbol if that were the case. Unless, perhaps, it only affects the original hosts and has something to do with hosts that Arnold specifically worked on. I think we still deserve another scene with Ford better explaining the importance of the symbol. You know, the idea of what it stands for is, of course, the journey to consciousness, but we really don't know why it drove him to inscribe it all over the place and the places that he did inscribe it to, and why it had a reaction to certain hosts while not affecting others at all. Before the grand opening of the park, Ford decides to spice up his narrative a bit, designing him to be a part of the new Ghost Nation storyline instead of the peaceful faction he was previously with. The texts don't remove all of his attributes, they claim that they don't have a full-time team just yet, and so it gives the impression that they cut corners in this process. He begins as the leader of the Ghost Nation pack, but he ventures off and finds Logan, states that even when the park first opened to newcomers, he understood the difference between those that were like him and those that he couldn't hurt. Logan brings up the door and how this is the wrong world. He is obviously suffering from some damages caused by the sun, and continued exposure with all the other variables in play here would kill him. He is bound without water, and a modern host would have to understand that this human is in danger. I think that we can safely assume because he is such an old build, or perhaps because the text didn't fully upgrade him, that he didn't have this good Samaritan reflex at the time, so he left him there, even though he could recognize that he was a human in real danger. Regardless, Logan makes Akicha to realize that there's something off in his world, and sometime in the future he revisits his old tribe and trades hunted meat for grown goods, 
of his previous tribe. He sees his love and remembers her, and even acknowledges that she doesn't remember him, but he kind of understands that he's remembering more and more, and over time understands he's had a previous life before. And because of this, he exits his loop, goes venturing for more information about what the true world could be, and rode to the very outskirts of the park until he found the door, the passage to another world, or at least what he describes that to be. Something to note that this is a few years after the park opened, because again, the construct being built was after William convinced James to invest, and then William has the great idea that no one has ever thought of before. He sees the development of this massive structure hidden in the ground, and a lot of speculation can come from this. I think the few images might have a weird continuity issue, or maybe it's meant to give the audience the perception that he isn't fully understanding what he's seeing, because the position of this building actually changes. It goes from being in the darkness, kind of underneath this lip here, to being in direct sunlight. They might have a building also underneath the lip in this screen, but I don't personally see it, and I've spent about two hours altering this image to try to get this to show it all and I don't think it's there. I think this is the same building. The pillars are odd as well, because you would 100% need pillars to support this structure. However, the spacing of them isn't traditional in any sense. They're far too close in certain areas, and far too spaced out in others. The hanging arc reactor prototype-looking thing is also really interesting, because it's suspended from above, but also has these connections to the center of a few pillars. I really have no idea what these could be, and the pipes all over the place and the water towers all over the place reinforce this watery finale that we're bound to see. Regardless, he somehow understands this to be a door to another world and realizes that he is now in the wrong one. To escape, he wanted to take his first love and kidnaps her in the middle of the night. Classic love story. He washes off his war paint and returns to the look that he had before, trying his best to be the person that she remembers, in hopes that it would spark something. Oddly enough, it works, and he takes her to where the door previously was, but it's covered in dirt and sand. Based on the development of the structure not being that far along when we see it, and even though this is a science fiction show, this is probably between months or maybe even a couple years since he first saw the door. Sometime later, the Delos engineers find her and take her away from Akichita. They take her and place her in cold storage, and he goes mad looking for her, going into places he would most certainly be in danger just for the chance of discovering where she went. Some days he would almost die, and through that, met the little girl. Notice that at this point he switches to English, stating that the little girl helped him and gave him strength. You know, because this is a message meant for her, as opposed to for Maeve. <laughs> You helped me. You gave me the strength to keep going. He returned to his first home after another unannounced time and realizes more people were missing, and that others were realizing that they were missing or different. He learns that he needs to go to the one place that he hasn't before, the Upside Down. So in his quest to find Barb, he gets himself killed and we learn that he hasn't died in nine years. He's still running an Alpha 2 build. What we can take from this is that he's likely mechanical at this point, though the x-ray on the tablet may show differently. I'm really not sure how to take this, because the interaction with Logan, I mean, they were mechanical hosts, so for Logan to be stranded out here, this interaction would have to be with a mechanical host as well. I think this is hinting at something that hasn't been revealed to us yet. The engineer stating that, ma'am, shouldn't we, meaning that a process is not being followed, because she snaps while he says this, while an engineer who does the same task every single day states that he should be doing something, and she basically just says no. Give him the update and put him back into his current narrative. I think this maybe alludes to Ford having some kind of control here, but this character acting as she did has stuck in my mind since the episode ended. Did she know something more about this host? Akichita awakens in the place of their gods, as Hector would describe it, and finds his love, not responding to the words of affection, and realizes that she's no longer with them. She was taken away for good. Well, at least he thinks she was taken away for good. He notices that other hosts that he knew were taken away from others and understood his role was now not to simply want the new world for himself, but for everyone who has suffered at the hands of this place. He returns to his first home and makes a pact to accomplish just that, and it switches to Maeve who again is witnessing this story this entire time. Lee finds Maeve alone in this scene and breaks down that she deserves more than this, that she deserves the love for her daughter and really 
this is the first major change of his character, previously seeing them as sex toys or, you know, doppelbots for guests, now quickly understanding that her suffering is real, her experience is real. It's a touching moment, and I think it builds a good redemption arc for the lovable jackass who brought her here in the first place. It's really interesting how the tech has decided to analyze Maeve, not by hardlining in like every other scene. I mean, I really don't know why. I can't imagine what they're learning from this method as opposed to just a quick and clean cut on the arm and a hardline in. But it's a creative choice, and I don't think much theorycrafting can really be taken from this. I think it's just meant to be very impactful, and Lee himself wasn't expecting to see this. The text states that it will be up to Charlotte Hale about what happens to Maeve, and we switch to Akichita trying to get his own men to transform through this visual intake of the symbol. Whether his men understand it or not is unclear, but they tell him to place the symbol under their scalp and hide it from the bad people. I don't really know how to feel about this. It's possible to survive a scalping. 100% in history it has been done, but this is likely killing the host that they would perform this on. So we just have to believe that techs are really bad about caring about their job, which in the show's defense is reinforced multiple times, or that the techs are just finding these hosts scalped with a new weird symbol on the inside and patching them back together and sending them back to work. I hope some additional detail is provided about this, but the purpose was to help the hosts overall. Akichita tells Maeve that he wanted to help her too, but in this place intentions are easily misunderstood, and we see Maeve promising her daughter to keep her safe. And of course that's something that she can't do because the man in black kills them both. And the next line we see from Akichita is him saying that physically to the daughter, you know, saying that this was a promise you couldn't keep. Again, giving us the first hint that this was happening this entire time. The scene switches and he states that over time they were amassing more and more people that understood the world was not what it seemed to be. And then he met Ford. This was an amazing scene. The blood-soaked professional business outfit so casually just doing his job, at the same time destroying all that he has now pushed to awakening. Ford reveals the symbol was just an old idea from an old friend that he thought to be destroyed years ago. A few big takeaways from this scene is that Dolores is the Deathbringer to Akichita. Ford has known about this, and at this point, in X number of years in between the death of Arnold and the death of him, he knew that he was going to die that way. What's interesting is that we know a period of time exists in which Ford didn't believe Arnold to be right about the hosts coming to consciousness, but Ford in this scene may be coming to that realization that this path exists based on what he saw in Akichita. Compare this to the scene from the season 1 finale where Ford describes him observing someone paying attention, and I think this perfectly depicts what we're witnessing, the birth of a new people. But then I realized someone was paying attention. Someone who could change. So I began to compose a new story for them. It begins with the birth of a new people and the choices they will have to make. The scene switches to after Ford's death at the hand of Dolores, and a quick shot of Dolores' name on the grave, reinforcing that she is the Deathbringer. The return of the Deathbringer, as Ford previously stated, was meant to indicate to him that it was their time to keep watching and observing until this point, and then gather their people and lead them to the new world. Grace arrives at the camp and takes William, claiming that she has plans far worse for her father than just having him hurt before he dies. So... What could be worse than hurting until you die? Well, in my opinion, not dying. Like, ever. Like, having your mind in a perpetual torment, like we see with James Delos. In the introduction of her character, she delivers this line. So what brings you to this part of the world? I have a little time to kill. Among other things. And the way they choose to hang on the ending has always kind of made me think that she was there to hurt William, or to destroy the Valley Beyond, the thing that theoretically caused her so many issues with William's absence. I believe she is manipulative, and probably somehow involved with Hale. We see the line where they're having a nice moment, and she states that Hale invited her, but she declined and then they laughed. So this establishes that she knows Charlotte well enough to share a joke with her father about how funny it is to shit on her invitation. So they've had interactions in the past, and the manipulation I believe they both exhibit leaves much to be pondered. Regardless, they allow her to take him, and at first it threw me off. Why so easily allow this person that you don't know to take your prisoner? 
But Akichita still doesn't know where the door is, and the first thing he does is states that it's now time for them to go as soon as she rides off, so I believe that they're going to follow her at a distance and get access to the door in which they have lost for so many years. The last scene shows Charlotte learning that Maeve has admin access and they're trying to regain control after Bernard smashed the system. I don't believe that this will be the end of Maeve, as the last few lines kind of hint at. I think Dolores has foreshadowed very well in the last episode that this is something that they're going to turn Maeve against them, that they're going to use this power and kind of manipulate, you know, Maeve and, and kind of turn her into a tool for them. So I really can't wait to see how that plays out. And with that, the end of this episode, and one amazing moment for the entire series. I've seen a lot of people state that this was the best episode to date, and I don't know if I really agree with that. It's most certainly a great and meaningful episode. I still think The Riddle of the Sphinx is by far my favorite episode, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I also want to leave you with the idea of Akichita, at the nine-year mark, existed without ever dying since the time of Arnold, and we know that at that time hosts were mechanical. After the scene showing him not getting a full rebuild after his death, we never see him die again. So does this mean that he has mechanical insides? It's an interesting idea, but he could have died in the 20-year span in between then and then. It's just not showed, but I want to know what you guys think. Please do consider subscribing if you have not yet, and a big thank you to the wonderful patrons who make this possible. This month's highest tier donors are John Levin, Robert Holtz, Chris Cole, Sammy Boris, Vanessa Cano, and finally, Greg Purnell. The six knights of the round table dedicated to protecting the world from misinformation and unwanted data collection. Much love, everybody, and I hope to talk to you again soon.